Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle. And today we're going to talk about a justifiable use of force or justifiable shooting. Now this shooting took place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And as I record this, it's been about, uh, I believe, 10, 11 days. It doesn't really matter. But it occurred when a police officer in the middle of the day, it was a Friday afternoon, a police officer was escorting a funeral and someone cut through the funeral procession. So the officer pulled the person over and they were going to cite him for breaking into a funeral procession. Not a huge deal, but, you know, A, show respect and don't do that. And B, take your ticket and if you think it's bogus, go to court and tell them why it's bogus and the judge might let you go. Well, that's not what happened in this case. What happened in this case is the person receiving the, the ticket, a Mr. Temple, uh, proceeded to attack the police officer, jumped him, was pummeling him. The officer was on his back, and the suspect was on top of him, beating him to death in the parking lot of an auto zone. Not a good thing. And this is in the middle of the day. This isn't 2 a.m., you know, outside of a bar in the bad part of town. This is like right in the middle of town in an auto zone parking lot. Well, uh, a bystander uh, saw what was happening and heard the police officer screaming for help and ran to his truck, retrieved a firearm, ran up and said, stop, stop. The guy wouldn't stop trying to kill the officer, so he shot him multiple times. Bad guy died. Officer lives. Okay, yay team. What can we learn from this particular incident? Well, number one, if you are a dedicated student of the gun, and especially if you carry or you're thinking about carrying a firearm on a daily basis for personal defense, when things like this occur, you need to examine them and see if there's any lessons that can be learned. And there are definitely some lessons that could be learned from this particular incident. Number one, okay, bad things can and do happen any time of the day or night. How many of you who have concealed carry permits talk yourself out of wearing your gun because you think, well, you know, it's the middle of the day, or well, I'm just going to the grocery store, or well, I'm just going to run up and I'm going to get a new oil filter for my truck and I'm going to come home and I'm going to change my gas and it's, you know, no, or change my oil. And it's the middle of the day, so I don't need a gun. Okay. We can't sterilize the world, people. Uh, you should know that. You cannot sterilize the world, and bad things can and do happen at any time of the day or night. Uh, the, the whole mentality of, well, I only carry when I think I'll need it, that's, it's just silliness, and, and we've talked about it before. It's like having insurance that only covers you occasionally or part of the time. So if you're going, lesson number one, if you're going to carry, if you've got a permit, carry all the time. You know, when you get up in the morning, you get dressed, you put your gun on, you take it off when you go to bed at night, and that's how it works. You just do it habitually because you don't know. That's the whole point. You don't know when you may be called upon to use it. And now the good guy in this, this story, he had a concealed carry permit, but he wasn't carrying his gun. According to the, the uh, WAFB news story, he ran to his vehicle retrieved his gun and ran back to assist the police officer and that's the only real ding that i can give him is he had a permit but he didn't have his gun on it was in his car now fortunately he was able to get to his truck and get it quickly but what if the truck would have been 500 yards away or 200 yards away or 100 yards away uh that's a long way to go to get your gun uh, my, my buddy James likes to say, he said, uh, um, it's a long way to the parking lot when you're in some, when you're somewhere and uh, you need your gun, uh, regardless. So number one, if you're going to carry, do it all the time. Don't talk yourself out of it because, you know, you don't want your friends to think you're paranoid or your, your wife or your spouse says, why, why do you think you need to carry a gun? Are you expecting trouble? No, if I was expecting trouble, I would have a rifle. So keep that in mind. Okay, next lesson we can learn from this story, and this is a big one, is the officer is being pummeled. He is being beaten to death. He drew his gun and he fired and shot into the suspect's torso. The suspect kept on trying to kill him. And the hero in this instance, uh, I believe his name was Mr. Uh, I don't want to butcher it, so I'm not going to say it. No, I'm, I can't keep But the hero in this incident, the citizen, ran up and fired multiple shots from a 45 ACP into the suspect's chest and torso area. The suspect kept trying to kill the officer. 
Finally, the last shot that stopped the bad guy went through his head. Uh, a bullet went into his cranium, and he finally gave up the ghost and stopped trying to kill the police officer. Well, what can we learn from this? Number one, handguns are carried for convenience. You would carry handguns because they're convenient, not because they're powerful. And if you shoot someone with a handgun, they're not going to burst into flames and just instantly stop. Now, they may stop because they just got hurt, and they're like, whoa. I don't want to be hurt. I'm going to stop now. But it's not a guarantee. There are no guarantees in life, especially with handguns. If you have to use a firearm, if you have to use a pistol, revolver, handgun, whatever, or even a rifle, to stop someone from committing deadly force against you or another person, you need to understand that it's not like running them over with a car. You don't just, boom, hit them and they're done. They might keep on going. They might have enough adrenaline and hatred flowing through their veins to just keep on doing what they're doing. And even the mighty 45, for, I think it was uh, four shots from the bystander's 45 pistol into the bad guy's torso, and he still kept trying to kill the officer. So uh, keep that in mind. You know, the, the folks that are like, well, I don't need to carry extra ammo or I don't need to carry more than, you know, I actually was in a gun shop recently. I was in it and uh, I heard the guy behind the counter tell a woman, well, if you can't get it done with one or two shots, then you probably can't get it done. Wow. Yeah, that that kind of awesome advice is still being dispensed out there and it's bull crap but you need to be aware of it so there's two big lessons that we learned from the incident in baton rouge louisiana and you can google it uh just google uh bystander saves police officer or bystander saves officer's life uh and it was in baton rouge number one if you're going to carry carry all the time actually have your gun on you and number two if you ever have to use your firearm in self-defense understand that the first shot or the second shot or even the third shot might not dissuade the bad guy from stopping you're just going to have to keep doing it until they stop trying to harm you or harm someone else and when the fight starts you won't know how many rounds it's going to take how many? Uh, when I was in the police academy many moons ago, uh, our firearms instructor, he said, look, when you use your firearm, he goes, you shoot until the bad guy stops trying to kill you. How many is that going to be? I don't know. He said, it could be four, it could be one, it could be six. We don't know it. And if, an, if you're ever questioned, officer, why did you shoot the man five times? Well, because four wasn't enough and six would have been too many. That sounds kind of like cocky, but the truth is you're not going to know when the fight starts. You might just pull your gun up and say, stop. And they're like, whoa, a gun. I'm going to stop. Or they might be in the process of committing a heinous felony and they don't even know or care that you're in the process of shooting them. So keep that in mind when you, as you go about your business. So you know, learn lessons. Take lessons where they're offered, and this is a good lesson. Now, our recommended viewing today, a lot of the material that we talk about here on Student of the Gun Homeroom can be found on the Armed Living DVD. That's why we did this. It's chocked full of useful information for you. The guy who wants to actually carry a gun to save his own life. And how can you get that? You go to Student of the Gun Gear. That's Student of the Gun Gear, G E A R, dot com. And you can order one of your very own. So until next time, I am Paul Markle, your favorite professor. And where are you going to go for all things Student of the Gun? You're going to go to studentofthegun.com. <laughs>